All right, let's look at another mechanical equilibrium problem. I'm going to kind of take you through the thought process, the steps that we want to follow in most of these mechanical equi equilibrium types of problems. It's important that you consider just the big idea of something being in mechanical equilibrium. One of the problems that a lot of students have is they try to set up one type of problem for a balanced meter stick or a balanced stick. And they try to set up another type of problem for something that's balanced on a hinge. And then they try to set up another problem for something that has tension with a hinge. And you can see that if you set up a new category for everything, you're going to have to memorize 10, 20, 30, maybe even 100 different types of questions, right? And some of them you won't even know what the AP exam is going to ask or, you know, what situation you're looking at. So it's important that we look at this as a mechanical equilibrium question, all right? Um, if you need to read through the question, go ahead and pause it. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read it, read through it for you because I know you can do that. But the first thing that we always want to do is draw a free body diagram. Okay, now that's going to be important because with mechanical equilibrium, we're balancing the forces and we're balancing the torques, right? And so for both those situations, we need to know what forces are acting and where, okay? So let's go ahead and draw. We've got, in this case, the shark, which is pulling down on this end of the stick. So that's the force of the shark, which we know is 10,000 newtons. We've got the tension right here, which is pulling up this way. Okay, so tension. Any other forces acting on a rod? Well, you've got the ground, right? The ground has an up force and the wall has a sideways force. You're welcome to call that all one force right there, but technically you do have the two components, one from the ground and one from the wall. All right, so we'll call this force of the wall horizontally, and we'll call this force of the floor, okay? All right, and we don't have any other forces since we are neglecting the weight of the rod. So there's our free body diagram, okay? Second of all, we need to choose our axes, all right? So when we choose our axes, you know, in some situations, like on an inclined plane, we want to tilt the axis. So you've got the x in a different direction, or you've got the y in a different direction. In this case, that really isn't necessary because you don't have an inclined plane. So we're just going to say that up is the positive y, and to the right is the positive x like we normally do. Now, part of choosing an axis is, an axis is that it's important that you identify the pivot point. And this right here is our pivot point. Right, because the uh, the radial distances when we do torque are all going to depend on your distance from the pivot point, and so that's going to be important when we come in to look at that. All right, so that's part of the axes, including pivot point. All right, number three is to look at components if we need to do that. We always look at the horizontal components and we look at the vertical components, right? So consider components. All right, and then number four, we're going to show that the sum of the forces equals zero. All right, so the forces acting on my rod are the tension and the force of the shark. Now I want to do that in both the horizontal and the vertical direction. So let's do horizontal first. The horizontal forces acting on my rod are the tension, but not all of the tension, right? It's going to be that component, which is why in step three we want to consider components. So we've got the horizontal component here, which will be the cosine, right? So And that's going to the left, so negative t cosine of 20, all right? And then we've got the force of the wall that's pushing to the right, so plus the force of the wall. All right, so there we go. There's all our horizontal forces. Let's look at the vertical forces. So what are the vertical forces? Again, we're ignoring gravity. We're neglecting the weight of the rod. Okay, so we've got the force in the y direction. So we've got the shark, which is pulling straight down. So force of the shark which is down, so that's going to be negative. We've got a component, the upward force of the tension, 
So plus tension, now that's the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that's going to be sine 20. And then we've got the force of the floor, right? Or the vertical component of that force down there. So there we go. All right. So now, step five is always to consider the torques, right? So now, since the rod is not rotating, then we know that the sum of the torques is zero. We know that the sum of the force is zero because it's not accelerating side to side or up or down. We know that the some of the torques are zero because it's not spinning. All right, so let's consider the torques. So some of the torques, so this needs to equal zero, this needs to equal zero, and then the torques. So if we consider torques, right, we remember that torque is radial distance times the force times the sine of the angle. All right, so let's look at the torque of the shark. In the problem, it says that the rod is 4 meters long, which means that the point of the force on the rod is 4 meters. So let's do the torque of the shark. And we've got the torque of the tension. All right, now the tension is causing my rod to go counterclockwise. So I'm actually going to change that to a negative right now, just a reminder. And the shark is pulling down, which is going to cause my rod to go clockwise. All right, so that one's a positive one. Now remember, these forces down here aren't going to cause torque, right? Because that's at the pivot point, and so the R part of it is going to be zero. So they can't cause the spinning part of the torque. All right, so these two are going to have to balance each other. So let's go ahead and write that out, Some of the torques equals the torque of the shark, which is the distance times the force times sine of the angle. Now to get the angle, I know this is 60, so by alternate interior angles, this is 60, which means if this is a right angle because the shark is hanging straight down, then that's got to be 30, so sine of 30. Okay, minus the torque of the tension, so the tension, we don't know what that force is. It's also 4 meters away from the pivot point. So 4 times the tension times sine of the angle. And the angle is 60 plus 20, which is 80. All right, so I've done that. And so now at this point, I should be ready to solve. All right, so Obviously, the easiest one right here, since the torques are equal to zero, is to solve for the tension. So let's go ahead and solve for the tension first. All right, so I'm going to move my calculator over so we can see it and work at the same time. So we're going to go 4 times 10,000 times sine of 30, which is going to be 20,000. So 20,000 minus 4 times sine 80, so 4 sine 80, so 3.94 t equals 0. So from there, we should be able to subtract. So negative 20,000 divided by the answer, which will be negative, right? So let's go ahead and put that in, and we get that the tension is 5,077. So tension equals 5,080. Three sig figs is enough. So we got the tension. Beautiful. Right? So now that we've got the tension, we can go ahead, we can plug that in up here, and we can get the horizontal force. or it's, Yeah, the horizontal force, the force of the wall. So let's go ahead and put that in up here. So negative 5,080 cosine 20 plus the force of the wall equals zero. So we'll just go ahead and do negative 5080 cosine 20, which is 4773. So when I add it to the other side, the force of the wall is 4770. Okay, so force of the wall equals 4770. All right, so now we've got that, and then we've got the horizontal, we've got the tension, so all we have left is the vertical force of the floor, so now we can put that in here. So we've got negative 10,000 
for the force of the shark plus the tension 5080 sine 20 and then plus the force of the floor so let's go ahead and add those together so negative 10,000 plus 5080 sine 20 which is negative 8262 which then I add to the other side and the force of the floor is 8260 Newtons. And there we go. We were able to solve for all the forces. We found the tension and we've answered the question.